Now, for more insight on U.S.-China relations, we go to Vijay Prashat, director of the Tricontinental Institute for Social Research in New York City. Welcome to uh, Global Watch. Uh, well, what do these new export restrictions that mentioned in our previous report mean? And why is Donald Trump enacting these changes now? What has changed? Well, the uh, rules come under the name of Wil Wilbur Ross, who is the Commerce Secretary. Mr. Ross in January said that under the coronavirus, the United States might be able to recover jobs from China. In other words, there's a sort of hallucination that the United States may be able to use the COVID-19 crisis um, to break the supply chain reliance on China on the one hand, and secondly, prevent Chinese tech companies from gaining any advantage across the globe. This is really what Mr. Ross has been saying for the last few years, long before the coronavirus. This is actually not so clear whether it's going to be good for the United States. As you know, uh, there's a huge trade imbalance between the United States and China, about almost $600 billion of goods imported from China to the United States and about $180 billion from the United States to China. The bulk of the goods coming from the United States to China are aircraft and electrical machinery. Now, if they're actually going to follow Mr. Wilbur Ross's um, you know, new rules, Boeing is going to have a hard time selling jets to China, which means that the Chinese government might very well, or Chinese aviation, mm. might very well buy Airbus from Europe rather mm. than Boeing from China. So this may actually end up hurting American businesses mm. uh, at a time when they are seeking markets. Well, if you, as what you said, it hurts both sides, hurts both America and China. Why do you think Donald Trump is doing it? Well, they're playing a long game. They're not interested in the short game. That's exactly what his trade war was about. The United States for a long period has felt, you know, threatened by what is known as the rise of China and has, in, in a sense, imposed a war, a trade war on China. I mean, this is not a trade war that I think either the Chinese or anywhere, anyone else around the world uh, needs at this time and even before this. I think the United States threatened by the rise of competitors of any kind operates in this way. It operated against mm. Japan in this way mm. in the 1990s, and now we see a repeat. Mm. Now, talking about trade war, actually at the time and now, especially some commentators have talked about uh, the U.S. and China enter entering a new Cold War. Do you see the situation as serious as that? And how might rising tensions actually play out going forward? I'm very uncomfortable with the language of a new Cold War because that language assumes that there are two parties to this war. If you look at the Commerce Department of the United States new rules, it applies against Russia, Venezuela and China. And we have to see this as the United States trying to prosecute conflict, to intensify conflict around the world. I don't see these other countries looking for a struggle. You know, Venezuela, for instance, isn't looking to confront the United States. It's the United States that's confronting Venezuela. So I don't see this as a Cold War. I see this as the United States unnecessarily provoking conflict, not only in Eurasia, it includes Russia and China, but also in Venezuela. I think this is the United States provoking conflict rather than you know, any conflict existing in the world. And I'm afraid we should see it like that and not use the language of a Cold War. Right, so we'll be getting back to you, Mr. Prashat, for more insights.